Okay, well, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, you know, so I'll be talking today about stream versus batch, leveraging M3 and Thanos for real-time aggregation. I guess I just had a, a quick intro, but take the mask off. All right, sure. That's good. Yeah, no, we want to be able to hear. Okay, um, yeah, so just quick intro about myself. So yeah, developer advocate at Chronosphere, uh, where I help out with the M3 open source community as a contributor. And then I'm also a member of the CNCF observability tag. Um, and prior to Chronosphere, I was a product manager over at AWS. Okay, so just running through the agenda for the talk today, we're gonna start out going through the problem statement and an overview of streaming versus batch aggregation. Then we'll go through stream aggregation with M3, followed by batch aggregation with Thanos, and then quick overview at the end, kind of comparing the two. So why does aggregation matter for real time? Um, looking here at this uh, example of the C Advisor dashboard, um, you can see that, so C Advisor is a way to get your resource usage and performance metrics of all of your running uh, pods or containers. So kind of CPU, memory, kind of your infrastructure level metrics. It runs as a daemon set inside of a kubelet. And then this particular uh, dashboard, we're looking at all of the um, pods within our gateway application. But essentially, you're just able to get a quick uh, 10,000 foot view of all of your, uh, of all of your applications uh, with this kind of, with this dashboard. So zooming in for this example, we're going to um, look at the, this particular panel here that's highlighted um, looking at CPU usage across all of your gateway pods or containers. So, um, you know, you can see here that it's, it's kind of showing an overview of all of your pods. But if we look at behind the scenes at what's, um, what it takes to really produce these results, you can see that it can, it can lead to um, quite a bit of time for your queries to fully render these results. So, the Waste Advisor is, is, is aggregating or pulling um, this metric, this container CPU usage metric, is it's pulling uh, labels across all of your pods in your, in your pod group. So as a result, you're getting roughly 51,000 time series, and that's going to be taking over 20 seconds for your results to render. So, and that's just to query this, um, this metric. So if, if you did any sort of uh, functions on top, like sum or max, you can imagine it would take much longer. Um, but in most cases, you typically don't want to, you don't need to look at your, your metrics at the per pod level, and you really just need that aggregated view to see what's happening across all of your, your pods or containers. So you can see here in this example, we've um, taken the same metric, except we've aggregated it against two labels, so container name and namespace. Um, and by doing that, we're kind of, we're also um, taking the sum of this metric at a rate of one minute. Um, and by doing this, you're kind of aggregating prior to query, and that's going to reduce the, the load on, um, on query time by quite a bit. So you're going to be seeing, you know, seeing your results much faster, so less than a second, and that's because you've aggregated down to roughly 230 time series. Um, so yeah, so that's just an overview of kind of how aggregation can help with performance. But a couple different ways of doing aggregation is streaming in batch. So just to kind of give an overview for those who might not be familiar between the two, two ways of aggregation. So with stream aggregation, you um, have data um, being collected continuously or you know, streaming continuously. The aggregation is going to be done uh, and performed in memory on the ingest path before being written over to your time series database. So you can kind of see in the little diagram at the bottom there. And this is um, typically very useful for, um, for, for information that's needed immediately. So for like dashboards, for example, um, as you know, your data is going to be aggregated in real time and then available immediately for query once it's been written over to your time series database. And then on the batch side, um, it's a little different because you you're going to have your data collected over time. And the way it works is um, you know, you're going to have your aggregation performed by reading your raw metrics from your time series database before then writing back the aggregated results. So you can kind of see the, the two arrows um, pointing from the batch job there on the diagram. But this is typically meant for large, um, large quantities of information that's not necessarily as time sensitive. Um, and then the data is going to be aggregated in batches over time. 
Um, so for the purpose of this talk, we're going to be looking um, primarily kind of at how uh, Prometheus and Prometheus compatible solutions perform um, or do aggregation, whether it be batch or streaming. But just to start out with giving an overview of how Prometheus does aggregation um, is they do, so Prometheus uses what they call recording rules to do aggregation. And what recording rules are essentially um, are that they um, allow for pre-computing of frequently needed or computationally expensive queries before then storing back the aggregated results to your time series database. So any the execution of these um, and the pre-computation of these are done kind of in memory as a single process at your regular intervals that you set. So every minute, 30 seconds, for example. So using that cron job type process. And this makes it really useful for dashboards. So by, using, by doing the pre-computation, you're able to kind of have much faster results than if you were to kind of have to re um, reevaluate your expression every time it's needed. And then, of course, as it's supported by Prometheus, you're going to have full access to PromQL. But typically, if you outgrow a single Prometheus instance, you may want to use a remote storage solution. So um, some of the most popular ones being Thanos, M3, and Cortex, which are all um, Prometheus remote storage and PromQL compatible. And they use a combination of batch and stream aggregation um, you know, to, do their, to do the aggregation. So we're going to now focus on uh, M3 for a streaming, streaming aggregation, and then we'll get into Thanos for batch aggregation. OK, streaming aggregation with M3. So just a quick overview of what is M3. So it's an open source metrics engine comprised of four main components. So there's the distributed um, custom built time series database called M3DB. Then there's the M3 coordinator, which uh, is our down, uh, ingest and downsampling tier, followed by the aggregator, which is optional to run depending on your use case, but it's um, the streaming aggregation or distributed streaming aggregation tier. And then finally, we have an optimized distributed query engine as well um, called M3 Query. And then M3 was built back at Uber and open source from 20, in 2016 to help with their uh, metrics monitoring use cases internally and is now used by uh, many other companies, including Chronosphere. And it was designed to be Prometheus remote storage and PromQL compatible. So just going to show a high level overview of what the architecture looks like. So you can see on the right side, you have um, instances of Prometheus. It's going to send in metrics to M3 via the coordinator using Prometheus remote write. Uh, and then you can have you know, your coordinator and then optionally your aggregator um, to do any sort of downsampling aggregation or um, before kind of sending over your metrics to M3DB. And then on the read side, similar thing, you're going to um, kind of send any query requests to M3 via the query tier um, using Prometheus uh, remote read. OK, so uh, streaming aggregation with M3. So with M3, the way that uh, that does aggregation is basically it moves the kind of Prometheus recording rule computation to streaming aggregation. And it does this by what, uh, through uh, what they call roll-up rules. So roll-up rules are essentially M3's approach to aggregation of high cardinality metrics. And it takes the similar, it kind of solves the same problem that recording rules does, just with a slightly different approach. Um, and how it works is you can kind of see the diagram here. It kind of aggregates across multiple time series. Um, and, then, and then what the aggregator and the coordinator do um, is that it'll reconstitute um, this new rolled up or aggregated metric as a um, new histogram gauge um, uh, or histogram, histogram gauge or uh, what else? or counter metric, yes, uh, before then writing it back to or before then writing it to M3DB. Um, and so then once it's written over to M3DB, it's going to be immediately available for, for query. And just what this is just kind of showing that uh, description visually. So um, essentially, there's going to be three main steps here. So the first step is going to be um, sending in your metrics to M3 via Prometheus Remote Write. So from there, you're going to have the coordinator and optionally the aggregator for uh, depending on your use case to do any sort of in-memory aggregation um, on the ingest path. And then from there. The coordinator will send over this new aggregated or reconstituted metric um, 
to M3DB for storage. OK, so some pros and cons of streaming aggregation with M3. So first being on the pro side that um, you know, it is very, you're going to get really quick career results um, with, with this approach because you're doing all of your aggregation uh, prior, to, prior to query. So you're going to have your results already ready to go. And that also makes it so that you're going to have um, very few uh, requirements on the query or read side of things. So you're able to then kind of use, kind of, you're able to kind of um, deploy more, more like other things uh, instead, like uh, scaling up a higher number of alerts or recording rules, because now because your your load is a lot less on on um, on your time series database from the from the query or read side of things. And then on the con side, uh, it can be complex to to operate and deploy uh, and require some additional overhead. And then additionally, it doesn't support arbitrary um, PromQL. Instead, it just, um, like I mentioned, the coordinator is going to reconstitute these metrics as uh, new aggregated counter timer histogram metrics before then writing them over to your time series database. All right, so now I'm going to get into batch aggregation with Thanos. So a little bit about Thanos um, for those of you who might not be familiar, but it's a CNCF incubating project. It was originally built at Improbable uh, back in 2017 in open source. And then it has uh, several main components that we're going to talk about today. So there's the store, which is essentially the um, gateway to object store. Then we have the query component which is a horizontally um, scalable and stateless query aggregation and deduplication tier. And then the sidecar, which is one of the ways to deploy Thanos, uh, and it kind of acts as a proxy for Prometheus via kind of remote re read, um, read and write APIs. Uh, and, then, and then there's the compactor, which is responsible for downsampling and block compaction and kind of applying any sort of retention policies. And then finally, the ruler, um, or the rule, which basically uses the Thanos rule command to evaluate any Prometheus recording or, or loading rules. And then finally, like M3, uh, Thanos was also designed to be Prometheus remote storage and PromQL compatible. All right, so this is just a high-level uh, architecture diagram of Thanos. So as you can see here, we have a few instances of Prometheus with Thanos running as the sidecar. We have the query component fanning out requests to the, each of the various instances, which will then kind of pull metrics, um, aggregate them, and kind of deduplicate them inside the query tier, which will then be informed by the ruler um, for any sort of uh, recording rules uh, that, that you may be wanting to run. And then um, another thing to note is that Thanos does, or the sidecar does, um, write over metrics and blocks of two hours by default to the object storage. So you are also able to then query for longer term metrics. OK, but how does uh, batch, or how does Thanos do aggregation? Um, so basically, you're going to have, uh, the way it works is your, your raw metrics data is going to be collected by your Prometheus instances prior to query aggregation. Um, so from there, your query component can then um, perform any sort of metrics aggregation or PromQL queries on top of your metrics that get pulled from your Prometheus instances. And then, and then you have the ruler, um, which will then implement any recording rules you may have before then writing your new aggregated time series data uh, or metric to, to object store. And showing this visually, um, kind of four primary steps here. Again, it's a very pared down view of the architecture, so we're not showing each of the components. but. Um, so you have, you know, first step here, metrics are collected by the Thanos sidecar store. Um, and then from there, you're going to have your ruler, which is going to kind of issue your, your query, your recording rules. And then the metrics will be pulled to kind of um, for, to meet that query by using kind of uh, reverse index querying and reading from storage. Um, and then the third step is going to be having the query component kind of evaluating that result on the, the query result on the, your pulled metrics. And then from there, the new aggregated uh, metric will be sent over to your object store. And you can see here as well, like there are 
a query, it has two different ways of kind of querying metrics. So you can query directly from, from your Prometheus instances via the store API for more like real-time queries. And then you can also kind of access more longer-term data through your object store. Okay, but what are some, some pros and cons of uh, this batch aggregation with Thanos? Um, so on the pro side, it does fully um, support and is fully compatible with PromQL. So you're able to kind of run those arbitrary PromQLs queries. And it's also, um, especially as it compares to M3, it's more simple to operate and manage, um, especially if you're wanting to scale up and down your resources as you're not having to constantly like redirect live flowing traffic or metrics. And then on the con side, um, you're basically adding, I guess, comparing to stream aggregation, you're adding an additional step by having to re-query and then read and write back your results um, to storage. So kind of by doing all of that um, over the network, it can be expensive or you know, kind of lead to large resource consumption, especially um, for like larger queries. And in addition to that, you can have um, slow queries, especially um, you know, when looking at recording rules or cron job type um, queries. If, you're, if your query components are going and querying a lot, like a large amount of metrics from your various Prometheus instances, that can take, that can take um, you know, quite a while for, for those metrics to fully be queried. Um, and at that point, you may, depending on your intervals that you're running your, your queries at, you may miss those intervals um, if it takes too long for your query component to fully uh, query and aggregate your metrics. And um, so not only that, but it also you know, could lead to your query component being overwhelmed completely. So uh, just one thing to, to note on that side. But, um, but yeah, so that's, uh, now we're just gonna jump into an overview basically of everything we just discussed. So um, kind of how do you choose? Like, you know, do you wanna do streaming with M3 or batch with Thanos? Um, so, you know, kind of recapping on the M3 side, I think, you know, one of the main pros is that it, it really does alleviate query requirements on your time series database. Um, by kind of doing a lot of that pre-computation prior to, prior to query, so that you can now use a lot of that, um, those resources now for additional um, purposes, like more recording rules or alerts. Um, however, it is, compared to Thanos, a little bit more complex to operate and deploy, and it doesn't fully support arbitrary PromQL. Instead, um, it reconstitutes these aggregate metrics as uh, counters, gauges, and histograms. And then on the batch side with Thanos, um, it's more simple to operate than M3, especially when wanting to kind of scale up and down your resources. And it also does fully support PromQL. However, um, by having kind of reevaluating uh, and rewriting and, re and re reading um, your metrics over the network, it can lead to large resource consumption and um, kind of slow query results as well. So, um, I mean, these are obviously two examples of streaming and batch that are specific to M3 and Thanos. Um, but I think they both do demonstrate some of the, the you know, the, the benefits and trade-offs of more like high level, like um, streaming and batch in general. So, um, I, you know, you can kind of hopefully use this to apply similar um, learnings to your particular use case that you may have. Um, but finally, you know, if, we, if you did kind of want to see if there was a way to do both together, um, I actually gave a talk with Rob Skillington up here, who's CTO and co-founder of Chronosphere. We gave a talk at PromCon on Monday about how you can use the M3 coordinator to provide streaming aggregation along with um, a remote storage solution like Thanos or Cortex. So definitely check that, check that out if that's something of interest. Um, but, but yeah, that's basically all I have. So I think we'll just open it to questions.